Good morning everybody and welcome back to a new Hush Life vlog. It is August 1st today. Can you guys believe that well over half of 2022 is now over. It's past July and we're into August which is the month that most of the western hunting states start to open. So good news for you guys. Um, hunting films will at least be captured this month and shared on our channel shortly. It's August 1st and we've got good news for you. For those of you who enjoy First Light or for those of you who haven't tried First Light yet, I wanna invite you to their sale. It is the season opener sale that starts tomorrow, August 2nd, and it runs through August 4th. To take advantage of it, definitely hop on their website at firstlight.com and it is up to 40% off on some of their key items. So some of our favorite pieces are on sale only the second through the fourth, so make sure you visit their website. You take advantage of the sale and get yourself some new gear just in time for hunting season. Um, but I recently got back from, heck, where was I? Oh, San Diego, fishing with Chad Mendez and the Fins and Feathers outfitting service that he owns. So it is a tuna trip off the coast of San Diego. We go out on the Shogun fishing boat. They have a great crew there. They provide meals and equipment. And we actually stayed on the boat two nights out there and caught yellowtail and yellowfin tuna. So I was lucky enough to catch myself a few yellow yellowtail and I've been home with it and cooking uh, poke bowls, which is kind of my new thing. Um, it's raw meat mixed with any type of sauce you want. My favorite is the uh, spicy tuna sauce. I've really been enjoying that, but I wanna share some of the highlights from the trip. Just a quick montage to give you guys a taste of what's coming on the channel soon. And of course, there'll be a full length video of the entire trip shortly. Yeah, in other news, what did I put up yesterday? Oh, the Texas spearfishing video. If you guys didn't get a chance to go check that out on our channel, it's right in the playlist on the fishing tab, or it's, you know, besides this video, it's the most recent upload. We uh, speared some big barracuda, some red snapper, some mangrove snapper, some spade fish, and a sheep's head. So go check that out on the channel. But for now, enjoy these highlight reels from the tuna fishing trip in California, and then we'll catch up with you guys after. So as you can see, it was definitely a good time. We got lucky with some decent weather. It wasn't crazy hot, but it was definitely warm enough to enjoy some nice sunshine. Again, full length video coming soon on the channel, but I also got a package from Vortex. Haven't opened it yet, so I figured I'll show you guys some of the new gear I got. I'm pretty rough on my optics, and I think I've been running my binoculars and spotting scope at least the last two years, but I finally got I think I finally got some new binos, so let's open this up and show you guys what I'm running this year. All right, apologize for the chainsaw going on in the background, but the neighbor seems to be doing some yard work, which is a good thing. It's been a while since he trimmed the tree. So, first up is a new tripod. I get a lot of questions. People always ask what tripod I run, and I'm kind of stuck in the middle. So I, for years and years, I ran an old um, vortex tripod it was heavy duty but i'll tell you what when you're um, digiscoping or when you're using it to pan around for hours a nice heavy tripod will definitely be a lot smoother and less bumpy when they're lighter and smaller and you have like a heavy pair of binoculars on the top or a spotting scope i run the razor hd the light the light weight of it 
is just going to have more vibration and the wind is going to affect it more, just making it shaky. So some trips when I'm solo backpacking, I use like the smallest, most compact model that Vortex has. And sometimes I use my old model, which they don't sell anymore, just because it's so heavy and sturdy. But I wanted to try this one. This is the Ridgeview Carbon. So being carbon, it's still going to be lightweight. You can see it's a pretty tall tripod. Um, I think I'm going to like this one because it's kind of somewhere in between the teeny tiny ones and the, the super big ones. So it's got the quick release plate, ultra stable design, of course, <laughs> the twisty knobs. Um, I don't know. Do you guys like the twisty knobs that you have to spin or do you just like the the uh, clamps that just fold and snap. I think I like those. They seem to be a little faster in, in uh, situations where you need to set up or break down quickly. Boom, Vortex Razor UHD. These have been out for a while. I think the other guys have them. These are the 12 by 50s. So 12 by 50s, um, I typically don't run on the chest. 12 by 50 is something I'm gonna um, want on the tripod. So this pair of binoculars, doubled with this spotting scope. During shed season, I can sit and um, glass south slopes, glass ridges, pick out sheds. It's, it's gonna be great for uh, Arizona coos deer. Um, outside of those, I don't typically run binoculars on a tripod often, but I'm doing it more and more. So this is gonna be very, very helpful for that. Stoked on the 12 by 50s. See what else we got. Oh, no way. I was not expecting these. The Razer UHD 18 by 56. Guys, I typically don't get like super stoked on new gear. If you follow the channel, you see like, I wear my stuff out and I'll use it for years. Um, lucky for us, we have great partnerships and uh, like Vortex, I did not think I was getting the 18 by 56. So everything I said about the 12 by 50s, using it on the tripod is gonna be even better with the 18 by 56. Imagine 18 power with you know, both eyes, how good you can scan on a solid tripod. So I'm stoked on that. That's gonna be super helpful. I know I ordered a bino adapter for the tripod. It's not in this package. I think it came, I think it actually came with the uh, tripod. So guys, I'm super stoked. New gear typically does not get me all jacked up, but optics, definitely gonna be a key factor to this year's hunt. So again, we've got all kinds of tags. I've got five elk tags in five different states. So the theme of my season is going to be trying to go five for five on elk tags, one archery, four rifle hunts, um, where these are going to pay dividends on those because they're going to be more of a spot and stock style hunt. So I'm super stoked, guys. Thanks to Vortex for hooking it up. Don't forget, go shop the First Light season opener sale, August 2nd through the 4th, up to 40% off. Make sure you go check that out. So I hope you guys have a good day, a good week. Hunting season is coming up. Comment below on which tag you're most excited for, and I will see you on the next video. Oh my goodness. Stop you talking to me. Guys, today oh. is a, it's a big day in a young boy's life, right? I don't know what And where's the old dude? I don't see no old dude. I just see me. Um, hey, today is a super exciting day. I've waited for this day, Gage. I don't know if well, you know this, oh but God. I've waited for this day since I was your age. Really? I remember, I kind of grew up, uh, we, not grew up, but we spent a lot of time in the summer up in a little place called Island Park, which is only two hours north of where we live in Pocatello. Two hours north of where I grew up in Pocatello. Anyway, we spent a lot of time in there, up there in the summer, fishing. I loved fishing when I was a kid. Absolutely loved it. From when I was probably his age, just when I started, uh, all the way through, you know, Gage, Gage's age, about 14, about 12, 14 is when I started dabbling in fly fishing. Anyway, I remember very specifically, um, there's a little river that it's called the Buffalo River, and it empties into another bigger river known as the Snake or the Henry's Fork um, in this place called the Box Canyon. We used to fish the Buffalo a lot, and there's this place that you could walk down to where the Buffalo River joined the Snake River or the Henry's Fork. And I remember sitting there one day when I was around Gage's age, around 13, 14, and watching guides put their boats into the river and take their clients down the Box Canyon fly fishing. And I remember sitting there one evening watching these guys do it and thinking that is probably the best way 
to catch a bunch of fish. And I remember thinking way back when that one day, one day, I was gonna figure out a way to be that guy putting my boat in the water. You're that guy, pal. And not taking clients down, but maybe taking my boys down. And being old. Anyways, guys, welcome back to the Hush Life vlog. Uh, we are picking up a drift boat today. I finally convinced myself, I'll talk about more of this, why I haven't got a drift boat yet in my life. But today is the day. I ordered this boat from Hyde Drift Boats, which is another cool story. Uh, back then, pretty much only boats that were floating down rivers back then were Hyde Drift Boats. And they were built in Idaho, right here in Idaho Falls, Idaho. Anyways, I put an order in for a boat last year. Um, they were behind like everybody else was. So I said, let's push it back until next year where I can get it and actually use it in the summer. And they called me up last week and said, your boat's done. Anyway, long story. That, that was a long story. I apologize. Let's go pick up our freaking drift boat. Are you guys excited? Yeah. Let's go. Uh, let's, go. Let, let's go. All right. Show us the new boat, dude. It's the new... It's the new... We have a new boat and... Are you going to show us or just talk about it? Okay. Let's go look at it. So guys, this is the high. This is what they consider the Montana skiff. Um, I went back and forth. I was going to get a bigger boat, uh, but... 90% of the fishing we're going to be doing is on the Henry's Fork. It's smaller water, doesn't require a big aluminum boat like, you know, they might use in Oregon. Our buddies that were born and raised, you know, are always fishing steelhead on bigger water. But this is the absolute perfect boat for what we're going to do. Plus, it's way easier to row. It's a little smaller, lighter. Um, and Gage and Winston are going to learn how to row me down the river. That's my whole basis of buying this boat. It's not for me to actually learn how to row it. It's actually for you to learn how to row it. Oh, okay. And then just guide me down the, the water. Is that cool? Yeah. So, uh, brought some Yeti coolers. We're going to put Yetis up front and in the back for seats. Um, plenty of storage. What do you think? No! Oh. I like that. You like it? I do like it a lot. Like Madison, it. who uh, helped me with the boat, um, her grandpa's is Lemoyne. He's the one that started Hyde. Uh, from what I understand, uh, Lemoyne started building aircraft or planes, single prop planes for like uh, dust cropping uh, way back in the 60s. And then uh, he took that knowledge and started building drift boats. And was it in the 80s they started selling boats? Yeah, so they started. Madison, you're going on camera. Okay. <laughs> this is, she said not to put her on camera. She's going on camera. So he started building boats with his dad back in the 50s. Uh, they built little boat boats for the Salt River in Wyoming. Oh, wow. And um, from that point, uh, he's kind of went on with his life but him and his sons so my dad and my uncle Steve and Joe they started building wood boats in their garage and drift boats really weren't super popular in the area um, but anytime they built a boat they would, would sell it immediately just kept building oh. and selling and uh, anyways they expanded into aluminum boats and then after aluminum boat boats they started building fiberglass ones um, late 80s early 90s so they've been doing it for a long time and <laughs> it's it's a fun journey to learn was about i correct sure. with your grandpa building airplanes at first yeah so in star valley there was a company called call air and they built uh, crop dusting planes okay um, over there and then he took that knowledge and kind of incorporated it in some of the boats he's built right yep, like the bottoms sure. of the boat yeah so there. just he kind of took the aerodynamics aspect and put it into hydrodynamics and yeah guys this is madison she uh I met her through Instagram probably three years ago when I was looking to buy a boat. Anyways, um, she is going to, her and her husband, Alec, are, are always on the water, always fishing, always duck hunting, doing fun things. Uh, when we have some free time, she's gonna, her and Alec are going to take me out and uh, kind of show me the ways, right? Yeah, for sure. Say, because I need to be shown the ways. But uh, I think we're going to take this thing out and go to Hepkin Lake tomorrow, kind of like break her in nice and slow, and then ready for the box on Saturday maybe? Okay, just scared of the box. Don't be scared, dude. Well, Winston's had enough fishing on the boat, so uh, <laughs> he said it's time to go swimming. You just get, can't slowly get in, you gotta jump in. Jump in. One, two, three, go. Dude, come on. One, two, three. One, two. Jump! Big Brother's showing you up now. Should I do a cannonball? Do a cannonball. Oh. 
Just, just what I wanted. What? See how much water you can get in the boat when you jump off. That was sick. I know. Okay, go. Get off the seat and jump in. Come on, Winston. I'll go back to the boat. Huh? If you're gonna go back to the boat. <laughs> and they're off. Fish on for dad. Guys, this is a historic, historic uh, fish right here. Gotta get him in first. Oh, 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 oh dude. <sighs> Stunned. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Stud brown. Bring it over here. Oh. <laughs> Guys, that's the first fish to the boat. To the new boat. And look at this thing. <laughs> Holy smokes. Dude, that's a 22 inch red brown. Dude. Dude. First fish to the new boat, guys. Not to the, I caught one. Look at that fish. Dude. Oh my. <laughs> Dude. Yes. What's going on, guys, and welcome to my portion of the vlog. This week, I wanted to talk about something that I kind of geek out over and spend a lot of time on. Today, we're going to be going over my early season, kind of that late August mule there to early September elk hunting, what I'm wearing out in the field. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. So we are going to start off with pants. Pants are huge for me. I'm a, I'm very picky when it comes to what kind of pants I'm wearing because I like to be lightweight, I like to be stretchy, comfortable, but I also like it to perform well in abrasion and kind of not very good scenarios such as rock slides or sitting down and glassing, maybe in some wet grass. So I'm going to go over my three favorite early season pants. So starting off with my number one go-to pant from First Light. Just, I wear this pant more than any other pant. It's the Corrugate Guide Pant, the original. It's just a killer pant. You have lots of stretch in there. It's a little bit heavy for that August type of stuff, but the comfort and the abrasion resistance and the water repellent uh, kind of just, you kind of just got to work through the little bit of warmth that you feel through these pants, but they are killer for any time from like the second, third week of September all the way through the rest of the hunts. I love these pants a lot, and if I had to pick one pair of pants, Corrigate Guide Pant. Second up on that list is First Light's newer pant. This is the Corrigate Foundry Pant. So it's the exact same pant as the one I just held up, but they have these side vents, and they have moved some pockets to the front instead of the side to accommodate for those vents and they have zippered pockets on the front so this pant is awesome it's very stretchy you can also run knee pads up here in this pant which is awesome if you're doing a lot of mule deer stocks where you don't have a lot of topography or cover and you're crawling a lot knee pads do help out in those scenarios this is a killer pant me personally I'm not a huge fan of any type of extra weight such as knee pads or zippers but I got to tell you, wearing these pants and getting a little warm and being able to open up the whole side of the pant to vent and to get some heat, it's it's worth its weight. My favorite archery hunting mule deer pant is the Guide Light Pant. So this pant is lighter than the Corrigate Guide Pant. It is their lightest weight pant they make. Very lightweight. The one downfall to this pant is it's a little bit more noisy and it doesn't seem to have as much sideways stretch. It still has like your vertical stretch this way, but the sideways stretch not so much. But you gotta sacrifice a little bit when you're going as lightweight as possible. And these are the lightest pants I have found in the market that perform this well. So these pants are four years old and they still look like they're flipping brand new. So this is the Guide Light Pant. Highly recommend this if you're doing some August style mule deer hunts. All right, moving on to my tops. What I love to wear early season. I love this Wick short sleeve t-shirt. I wear this thing so often. It's a high quality Merino wool, so you can wear it four or five days in a row and it hardly traps in any odor, which is very important when you're going on these long backpacking trips. You don't wanna be stinking when you're trying to sneak up on some mule deer and elk. My absolute 
favorite, favorite piece of First Light gear is their Wick hoodie. This is a top. It's technically a base layer, but I wear it as an outer layer all the time. So this one, I wear shed hunting, I wear fly fishing, I wear uh, trolling for kokanee, and ultimately, you'll find me wearing this hoodie. I have it in every color because it's so important to me. <laughs> I, I wear this thing all the time. You'll never see me hunting elk, deer, anything without this hoodie on. It is a definite go-to for me. So this is the men's wick hoodie. My next layer that I put on top of the wick hoodie is the furnace quarter zip. So this is a very, very thick merino wool. And I wear this as an outer layer a lot. It's just very quiet. Same kind of properties the merino wick hoodie has. Very little odor. I've had this thing for four years. Still looks flipping brand new. I'm not even lying to you guys. Like I am very impressed with the quality of this stuff. And I'm not even saying that because we work with First Light, but before I even started working with Hush, I was a full-time hunting guide. And that's when I bought some First Light gear. And this is one of the pieces that I bought three or four years ago. And it's probably my go-to. You'll find this the bottom of my bag all the time. I use it as a pillow. I use it as a glassing pad to sit on a lot of times. And when I get chilled, this is going on. There's two pieces that I, I really recommend. If you're any type of serious hunter, you know that you always need some type of rain jacket and some type of puffy jacket. That's just common knowledge in Western hunting. Uh, kind of my go-to is the Brooks Down puffy jacket. I wear this thing a lot and I have it in a couple colors, but you, you just can't replace how small this thing folds up in its own pocket. You can't replace this jacket. It's so lightweight, so compactable. You'll always find this in the bottom of my pack as well. It's very, very important piece of gear. I either wear the Brooks Down or the Uncompadre 2.0. It's kind of a toss up. Uh, if I had to pick, I'd probably go with the Uncompadre. It's a little bit heavier, but I do think it's a lot warmer in certain scenarios. So a puffy jacket always finds its way into my pack. And then a rain jacket. So this is the Vapor Storm Light rain jacket. This thing has gone all over the country. I always kind of just keep it balled up. It's, it's a pretty solid rain jacket for how lightweight and compactable it is. I mean, this literally can just stuff in a water bottle pouch if you need it to. And you cannot, cannot replace the properties of a solid rain jacket. It's a great windbreak if you're sitting on a hill glassing and you just are getting chilled to the bone because the wind's just ripping. Throw a rain jacket on, I promise it'll help tremendously. And if you're hunting any type of high country like I usually am, those little rain squalls that just come out of nowhere, you're gonna wish you had a rain jacket. I don't usually pack rain pants, because my mentality, if it's raining hard enough to need rain pants, I'm probably gonna hightail it back to some type of shelter. But uh, rain pants do have their places when you're trying to hike through some tall wet grass or something after a rainstorm, you're gonna wish you had some solid gaiters or rain pants. So that brings me to the next item on our gear list, and that is accessories. Accessories, this is a big one, and this is something that I've used for a few years, like I said, guiding. I ran the original Traverse Gator, which is the 1.0, but these are the uh, Traverse 2.0 Gators. These things are solid because they're not a super high profile gator that comes up to your knee. This is a low profile gator that basically just keeps the top of your boot dry and clean of any debris. If you've ever hunted an area that's super steep with rock slides and you're basically skiing as you're going down the hills, you'll always find debris landing in the top of your boots even if you have a longer pant. So I love some type of gator to keep stuff out of the top of my boots. So my gator of choice is the Traverse 2.0 gator. Next up is gloves. And I'm somebody that never really wore a lot of gloves. And if I did, you'd often find me in like some leather type ranch gloves. But something that I found that I really, really enjoy is these Guide Light uh, liner gloves by First Light. So what's, what's cool about these gloves is you can still use your phone. You can touch, touch screens with the fingers here. But what I really, really like about these gloves is oftentimes early season when you're glassing a lot at high elevation, the things that get sunburnt are like your ears, your nose. That's why I always wear a boonie hat. 
and then the backs of your hands. If anybody's been glassing for a long period of time, you know what I'm talking about. So something as simple as a thin lightweight glove to keep like the sun off of your hands while you're glassing is a game changer. And it also helps with mosquitoes. A lot of places I'm glassing, mosquitoes are pretty bad. So just keeping most of your skin covered if possible is a huge plus. And my preferred glove is the Guide Light glove because it's literally, I don't know how, if you can tell, but just so form fitting, so sleek, and it hardly feels like you have anything on. So I really, really like these gloves. I still feel very functional and mobile in these gloves. It doesn't feel like a hindrance, which is very important to me because oftentimes gloves feel like a hindrance to me. So there you have it, guys. There's kind of a look at my clothing that I'm wearing early season. If you guys are interested in any of this clothing that you just saw, I want to let you know. Very, very exclusive sale going on from August 2nd to August 4th. First Light is having their season opener sale. Up to 40% off of a lot of gear. This is the biggest sale First Light has had in a long time. So if you want to get any of these pieces of gear that I've shown you today, make sure you go to the link in our bio and go check out First Light. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this portion of this week's vlog but I wanted to give you guys a little sneak peek of something that I've been working on, kind of keeping hush hush, but I thought it's a good time to kind of give you a little bit of a sneak peek. So that's all you're gonna get for the sneak peek. Stay tuned for some pretty exciting content featuring what I just showed you. But I hope you guys enjoyed this week's vlog and we will see you next week. Peace.